welcome to this week's podcast. My name is Jodie Bunting. This is the Jodie Bunting podcast. I'm pleased to say our special guest today for Fat Fitness is Dominique Pollard. Jodie, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Now, importantly, we're not spelling it F-A-T, fat. We're selling it P-H-A-T. It's Fat <laughs> Fitness in a great way. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know Dom, if you if you maybe live in not on planet Earth, you may not know her. She is basically <laughs> an entrepreneur, <laughs> entrepreneur, the queen of warriors, but also a fitness presenter, the creator and educator of the Warriors program. So what is Warriors, Dom? Tell us about it. So Warriors was created to kind of tackle what everybody saw fitness as. I mean, when I sort of came into the fitness industry, I, I could only really see one shape of fitness instructor. I tried to go to the gym. I just, I'd had babies. I definitely wasn't fit at all. And um, all these mirrors and spotlights. And I remember going to the gym, JD, thinking, oh my gosh, I can't do this. And I got back in my car and went home. And um, it sort of stayed with me for ages. And I just thought, this isn't how it should be. And I'd never, I'll be honest with you, I'd never even heard of community fitness or anything like it. I only knew the gym because that, that's what it was. And um, I thought to myself, I've got to try and do something here. There's got to be other people like me who feel like this. And I, I want to be better. So um, I decided to put disco lights in a room with, with no mirrors. And um, yeah, so I started doing it. And I think there was like nine girls, you know, we were having a laugh teaching this little combat class. And I loved it. I was fine with my nine girls. I ultimately started it thinking if I could just earn 50 pounds a week, I don't have to keep working at the petrol station because I, I really didn't like it there. Yeah. Um, the only good thing about it was talking to people because I love talking to people anyway um as, as soon as I started it I started getting trolled all over Facebook for being a fat instructor <laughs> and they weren't talking about the pH version either no, they were talking about <laughs> Yeah, um, which, do you know something, probably the best thing that could have possibly happened, because I was, and that, and, and do you know something, I was straight on that, uh, that post on Spotted saying, it's me, this is me, and if I can do it, you definitely can too, I thought, this is exactly what I needed, uh, yeah. was for, for this kind of, because, you know, social media, it thrives on negativity, doesn't it, so obviously there were so many people attracted to that post, and then the next week, there was like 25 Five thirty people waiting to get in. Amazing. And how just... big were you at that point when you first started? About probably a size twenty. Um, I'd, so I'd only, I'd only just had a baby. So I'm trying to think how old Alfie was. He would only have been about probably twelve weeks old. So I was post baby as well. Um, you know, all the back hormones pains everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> hair everywhere. <laughs> I didn't have time to do my hair and makeup. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so like the people who were coming, this I, I realised really quickly, Jodie, that this was something special because the people who were coming were saying, I haven't done any exercise since PE at school. Yeah. And I specifically remember one lady saying, I've never spun around. I've only ever walked forwards and sat down. <laughs> so I was like, Unbelievable. Wow, I know, and I will never forget that conversation. And she ended up doing incredible, like incredible running marathons by the end of it and everything. So, yeah, really, really, it's been so positive to see how many people in the community might not have accessed their fitness journey had we not sort of made this movement. Now, I so, first yeah. met you at Dolby Pride about four years ago. And I remember yeah. you and your team getting on the stage. And it's not just a fitness class. It's kind of, you know, I know it's cliche. It's a lifestyle. It's a team. But, you know, yeah. they all, you even just walking around the street, not even teaching, just going, ho, oh, and yeah. yay. <laughs> like, what is that? Did you create that or did they create it? How did it happen? How did it become like that? So I, I can remember the day it happened. I definitely didn't put much thought into it, Jodie. It kind of just happened. <laughs> and um, we, we were sort of doing these, these classes. And I just started, because I didn't even call it Warriors to begin with. I called it Thermo Vibe Fitness. And uh -huh. I was teaching this class. And I remember just thinking, wow, look at these guys. They're such fighters. You know, when I was actually teaching. And I just said, you like Warriors? You like Warriors? <laughs> and then I started going, ah! making this like big roar <laughs> and they started doing it back and wow. um 
this woman came to me, well, two of them actually, because they had their t-shirts printed, and they said, I feel amazing. You know, when we make that big noise, I feel like I can just get out all my emotion out. And I thought, that's the warrior roar. And from yeah. that day, it became warriors. And now we totally believe, and, we, and what we teach is that in all situations, your voice is your power, whether that's leaving domestic violence, standing up for yourself as a child, you know, telling people who you are with no voice, you've got nothing, have you? Absolutely. And and that's that's how, <laughs> that's how you can hear the warriors come in. <laughs> now I did after I met you at Pride a few weeks later. I came along to your Elveston class, didn't I? And yes, just, just tell describe to people what that room's like because it's not like a normal fitness studio at all. It's not just not got mirrors, but it's it's got something special about it, hasn't it? It has. So it's, it's at the Genesis Centre in Alfreton, and I basically have a hyper fixation, absolute love of the circus, because I think when you go to the circus, right from being a child to being a grown up, no one's really a grown up at the circus, you know, and I, I walked into there and I thought this indoor marquee is not an indoor marquee. This is my circus tent. And we brought all the lights in and there's lights in every corner. There's cinema screens. The idea is with Warriors is that from the moment you walk in, you are distracted from the real world. And that's why there's so much fun dress there's so much distraction because we really don't know what it takes a participant to come into a class let alone leave their front door what they're up against so I certainly don't want them to come into a normal place with boring everything like you know we're just used to in life we're constantly under pressure to look a certain way to act a certain way whereas at warriors <laughs> do what you want come as you want you know come as you are and um yeah you're right it's, it's like a, a, a big magic dome of love <laughs> And then the other thing as well, which is special, which I love, is that you have a stage team, don't you? Who, again, yeah. are not kind of how you'd expect a stage team to look like. No, that's exactly what we don't want. So I remember uh, MoveFit at London, because I'd started presenting really early in my career. Because of this um, commotion on social media, there was the Radio Derby, the Princess Trust, all these people were getting involved. They ended up flying to America and filming uh, in California because they were just like, eh? This girl's not like really tiny with a six pack. What? What's this thing doing? Like, what? What's happening? And um, and I just had no, <laughs> with my kind of mindset, I just had no problem with any of it. I was just like, what? I don't care. Like, I didn't. I was not bothered. It, you know. I think when I first saw some of the words, I was a bit like, am I? Is what, that am me? I? Yeah. Is that me? Am I? Am I this horrible person that shouldn't fit into this world? We're having so much fun. And then I thought, hang on a minute. This has got to be happening to thousands of people who definitely have musical talent and, you know, community leadership skills. I'm not having this. And um, and and this is this is what started to happen. So I went to Move Fit anyway, and I was watching some of the brands that we all know dominate the the gyms of the UK. And I, I'll never forget this moment. So the presenter had a tape measure, and she put the tape measure around the girl's waist before she got on stage to make sure that she was where she should be to get on stage. Are you joking yeah. me? No, I am not. I will what never forget it. What year is this? So, so I started 2000, 2017. It's not that long okay. ago. Wow. They're still doing it now. They're still doing it now, this certain brand. Yeah. And um, I was just, I was absolutely horrified. I really, really was. Yeah. And um, I mean, I'd start, I started to lose weight because I was exercising so much, basically. It just started yeah. To, yeah. to happen as it does. <clears throat> anyway, I got on stage and I was bigger than everyone else still. And as I came off that stage, a really well-known fitness brand uh, for clothing, they just came running up to me and they were like, can you come try some of our leggings on? We really want to see someone with a real body in our leggings. And they were, it's like really high patterned legging company who I probably just can't say the name of at the moment because I'm working with other people at the moment, but yeah. they were great yeah. and then they were straight in. And uh, I got sponsored by this company and that they, all these little things were just adding up, Jodie, for me to think, there's something really important that needs to happen here because this is just not okay. Like it's not okay the way that, well, women and men were being treated in the in the industry. You know, I know a lot of people talk a lot about women being under this body pressure, but I think men are under it more than ever at the moment. Like needing to be muscly, you can't yeah. be too small, yeah. you can't be too big. Um, yeah, I think that you know we're nowhere near where we need to be, but we're getting somewhere. <laughs> we're getting somewhere. <laughs> 
<laughs> so how did you go from turning this uh, six, seven person class into a franchise like it is now? So it just kind of grew organically. And, you know, if there are any other fitness instructors who are, who are listening, I would say that, you know, don't be disheartened at first because it, it didn't happen overnight. You know, there was many, many times that those classes were still hard to fill. But organically, it started to get busier and busier and busier because of all this online commotion. People were listening because there was ladies out there. And at the time, it was just ladies. We have lots of men as well now. But there was ladies out there that were looking and going, yeah, I feel really uncomfortable with this woman being absolutely bullied all over the internet. She's still carrying on. I'm going. And by the time yeah. they got to the class, they were already like, <laughs> like I'll show were... them. <laughs> yeah, they were literally like, you know, and that's why they felt um, accepted in part of the family immediately because they were already emotionally involved. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, you know, this is why I always say to my team, I always, we, we have something called a buddy system way before you get into the room and, and near the stage. And that is all different sh shapes of and sizes of people waiting for you, the new person to come in and you will be met with a hug. And even if you're not really a hugger, it's going to, it's going to happen. You're going to get um, it anyway. Yeah, you're going to get dragged in. And, um, you know, I don't ever want anyone to feel alone from the minute you decide to be a warrior. That's the end of feeling lonely because the, the girls, the, it's not it's not just me it's it's the warriors like i look at them as as a, a tribe really and i think almost i think i'm not worthy of this what this energy that they create i'm just there to host it but they are the community and they are the reason there's so many of them because they don't they don't let each other down you know there's no bullying or anything like that the the interesting thing they always say you know like in business the the true um the, the true experience of whether you're running successfully is when you step out your business if it keeps on going exactly. and this is where because you haven't been able to teach and stuff your girls your presenter team just keep on going your members yeah. keep on coming so I think that is the real proof in the pudding that you've got this recipe for success don't you think yeah thank you absolutely I really do and and the team are so wonderful because we don't really take anyone onto the team unless they've been through the warrior journey. So by saying the warrior journey, that's not a training course. That's literally coming to the door as a customer, not a fitness instructor and yeah. organically becoming one. Because I think it would be very difficult for me to expect an instructor that's been trained with another brand to walk in and fully understand. I mean, every industry, every instructor I'm sure believes in equality and wants the best for the community. And, you know, perhaps someone's listening thinking, well, I, I think all of that, so why can't I join Warriors? It, it's, you can, you can, you absolutely can. But to be working directly in the, the hub, you know, the HQ, <laughs> I just think that you should have you should have been through the door as a nervous person because then you will understand yeah. what they feel like. You should go from the back row to the front row because then you know how it feels like. You can't read and teach this. You can't teach everything. Some things have to be learned from the heart. And it's just because I, I noticed even when you were teaching, it's the names you say on the mic. It's the looks in the eyes you're giving people. You know, you are so connected to your group. And I think yeah. that's what, when those people do develop into the stage team, they do exactly the same, don't they? Just that yeah. whole room when I was in there, you can just feel that positive vibe, the positive emotion. Yeah, and I love it so much. And you know what? I think anyone that's in the fitness industry at the moment would say this has been a hard shift after COVID. You know, yeah. we've all come out of it more or less penniless, if we're honest. I don't know anyone that's rolling around in cash at the moment. Yeah. But who wouldn't want to be with their family, their fitness family? You know, you, you get away from every day you're in that room. And it is literally like I saw a picture. It said world off music on. And I thought... That is it. Like, and we always say it's the one hour of the week where you remember you. And yeah. you do, you just, you're just gone, aren't you? You're just there and throwing yourself around to the music, having a laugh, being silly. And there's nothing more important for your mental health than that. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your weight loss journey. Because again, I love the fact that you haven't specifically gone for weight loss. Weight loss has actually been a byproduct of you doing all this fitness fun, hasn't it? Literally. So, you know, at no point did I, I look and think I need to look like somebody else. 
when I look at the pictures of when I started to who I am and how I look today, yeah, there's been changes. It's been nearly 10 years of training every day. So it would be impossible not to. Yeah. But I don't, um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, even before I tell you about the nutrition side, I always say to anyone I'm training, we never ever, uh, I don't like the word diet for a start, yeah. but we don't even do the plan. You know, if it's your child's birthday or your dad or some family member or some kind of exciting event, I don't believe in all this, well, check the menu before. No, go and have whatever you want because yeah. life is way too short for all that business, way too short. And do you know something? I was saying, you know, if you, even if you lose half a pound a week, that's like, what is it? R ridiculous, 25 pound a year. Stone a year, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's 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 just that that's it. And over ten years, that that just adds up, doesn't it? So don't yeah. put that pressure on yourself. Um, but the reason that I had to focus on it a little bit more is around about two thousand and seventeen. I'd actually realised that I was having major, major sort of women's health problems. Yeah. I wasn't meant to have my last baby, but I was very lucky that I did. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> from from literally from the minute I started teaching fitness, there was problems. And it sort of led towards an in inevitable hysterectomy. Now, the run up to that was, I mean, any any woman that goes through what what you do after having a baby is going to understand. But it's just the sugar loading because um, yeah. I was teaching all the time. I was ill. I was weak and, you know, having all these problems. And so I thought to myself, right. I'm putting a lot of weight on here, even though I'm exercising, because the amount of chocolate to just stop this, which I was, you know, felt weak all the time, was just putting this this weight on. Now, with the weight gain came the back pain, which then made it harder to teach. Yeah. Um, like, I'm, and when I say weight gain, I'm talking probably four, five stone in two years was back on. Um, and as soon as I had the hysterectomy. I could exercise again like within six weeks my life was sort of coming back to normal yeah, everything was yeah. starting to settle now with that I thought to myself I, I, Jody, I just can't go back to this pain that I had in my back because I have a love of step aerobics like I'm absolutely in love You're with crazy. it crazy I hate it I love it I love it honestly and I was trying to get on the step like six weeks after hysterectomy which was just obviously ridiculous yeah. uh, and I couldn't do it but I was adamant that I wanted to do this so anyway here I am after the hysterectomy it's now February 2000, 2020 the, the year of, of, uh, of hell <laughs> And just as I'd sort of got myself ready to go for it, yeah, March 16th, 2020, we got closed down. And um, <clears throat> I thought to myself, I can't believe this is happening. Like, I've literally prayed and prayed for this operation. I've had it, and I, I want to really get back on stage because like you say a lot of my presenters were having to do the work for me I've sort of stood with a mic not being able to move for the best part of 12 months and um I thought to myself right I need to do something here and I can remember being at Tattershaw Lakes when the the message came out of what was happening someone told me about this thing called Zoom which is what we're on now and um I was trying Zoom. to work it all out yeah I was like what Zoom what, what is it and uh, that same night, I was ringing Warrior saying, you should try this thing out. I, like, I, I think we might be able to do these fitness classes on online. This was on day one. Yeah. So by the time the following week came and we got closed, we were already ready to go. We were already ready. I've got it all ready to go. So um, I think this might be my ADHD, though, you know, because with my ADHD, I try to use it as like a professional propeller. But although that doesn't always work. <laughs> but I was on it. And um to cut a long story short, because otherwise I'll, I'll keep telling you every like minor detail, uh, I realised that we could actually use this time when we were sort of isolated to really focus on how to feed the family in a really healthy and cheap way. Yeah. And it started off with a banana bread. Like, I, I made this banana bread. And I, <laughs> I can remember trying to get these bananas, which was not easy at the time. If you remember, you couldn't even really go to the shop with your kids or anything. Yeah. So... Yeah trying to get this cheap stuff and then cutting it up and trying to work out how many people could feed from this banana bread, which was fine. So that then my, my brain started thinking, okay, how can we do this to promote weight loss? Because all the news was talking about was everyone's putting weight on, nobody's getting out the house, you know, well, obviously, you know, they, they locked us in, in our houses and then had a go at us for putting weight on. So yeah. this was when I thought, how can we organically do this? And I was thinking family, farm food and then family was born 
And it's so funny because you try, don't you, to come up with these successful projects and you put so much effort in. And then I sort of just did this little farmerly idea and it ended up getting backed by the national lottery and being this like national campaign and yeah it was um the, ultimately it just encourages you to eat less processed foods so if you can farm it you can eat it so we originally said you know if you could pick it grow it or you know yeah we, we can't say that now because it's it, it's offensive but if you can farm it you can eat it so um, I needed to be more inclusive of this because I didn't think about the fact that some people don't eat meat and I didn't think yeah. about that because I, I eat meat so I had to revisit that and take that very seriously and I'm so glad I did because now it's fine for everyone you know we've got the Ramadan section we've got kosher we've got oh. everything to make sure that it is there for everybody so yeah that's that's what happened with that and what is formally? Is it a course? Is it just a group? What is it? How can people get involved? So anyone can do formally. It's 12 weeks. Um, you work as a team. So I've created, it's basically an online game. So it's a little bit like I'm a celebrity, but you get dropped into a farm, a virtual farm. And on that farm, you've got no money. <laughs> so the only way that you can eat and survive is by harvesting the land. Now, harvesting the land means cardio minutes. So minutes that get your heart rate up as if you were a virtual farmer on the farm. Yeah. Now, anything that's grown from that farm, whether you've, reared animals or you've picked um you know what you've grown as far as vegetables fruits anything that the earth grows is on this farm basically now all of that you can eat as much as you want providing that you're doing at least 30 minutes harvesting now harvesting means cardio minutes so they have access to 100 fitness classes at any time so they're anything from seated indoor running indoor walking dancing latin fit combat there's something for everyone now, if they want anything else, that's fine, because we don't restrict food. That's something that we're really serious about. Um, so we have a farm shop, and on that farm shop is Mars Bars, KFC, Ooh. McDonald's, anything you want. <laughs> exactly. Get me to that farm shop. <laughs> but you've got to do your extra harvesting to get that. So you can okay. earn farm money, which is in minutes as well. So, for example, a Mars bar might be 25 minutes. So you would need to do those 25 minutes at a heart heart elevation to buy that Mars bar. Now, we started in 2020, and by the end of that year, the farmers had lost 320 stone. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? I lost five stone just helping them. <laughs> and it just goes to show, doesn't it, just giving people that reward you know, yeah. do this and get this. That's sometimes all people need to get them motivated. I mean, the thing is, I understand that there's, I, I have dyslexia and I'm really open about that. Um, I'm open about all the funny little brain functions that I have. But I try to help other people with that because, you know, someone spoke to me about macronutrients and the divisions of uh, pie and things like that. Yeah. No idea what's going on. So I thought, let's take all of that science out and create a game. And yeah. now... All, all they have to think about is, okay, how many, how, how much do I need for the shop and what can I have unlimited? That's it. Amazing. So, yeah, it's super, super easy. And um, it's amazing to see them make that lifestyle change because we have, we have had people who've got diabetes who are now not diabetic. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, to, that's even better than losing weight, isn't it? To get rid of oh, a health yes. ailment is such a Literally. gift. Yeah, yeah. And, and I try to say this to them because I don't, I always think, you know, you can get obsessed with anything and I don't want people to get obsessed with weight loss because it's not the ultimate goal. What you said earlier, the byproduct of this is that your body will naturally lose mass if you're only doing cardio. But um, at the end of the day, I don't want them to focus on just weight loss. I want them to focus on all the benefits of having a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Now, just talking about, you said there you lost five stone. I always remember being on the Trisha show when I'd lost loads of weight. And she said to me, um, you know, you used to be, I'm so fat, I'm into fitness and everybody can yeah. do it. And now you've lost weight. So, and she said to me, you know, why did you lose weight if you think being fat and fit is so good? So how uh, would yeah. you answer that question for all those oh, haters out there? I can't tell you how many times I've had this question. Like, you can imagine. And especially, you know, when I had my teeth done and things like that, like all of these visual changes that were happening, people were like, uh, well, she's forgotten where her roots are and all this, that, you know. Yeah. And obviously I had to learn how to, to answer that question because I didn't have the answer to that immediately because 
it wasn't my focus. It was happening whilst I was helping everyone to do what they wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and I still strongly believe to this day that your body shape has nothing to do with your fitness level. And anyone who doesn't believe it, come and have a look at the Warriors because yeah. they range from the smallest human I've ever seen to some of the biggest people I've ever seen. And they're all in at the same fitness level. So explain that, you know, and, and, and that's what I say is if they put too much focus on me, I put it straight back onto the Warriors and say, look, I am just serving this army of amazing humans if you have any questions look at the variety that we have here so you know i didn't sort of look at myself and go right okay i you know like when you go to these fitness clubs and they want a goal of how much weight you want to lose like i don't that's such a needless pressure and i really don't think anyone should ever do it but yeah each to their own um at no point did i say right i want to lose this amount of weight and honestly you know if i um put two stone on this year come in I'm not, I'm not bothered. I really yeah. don't care. As long as I can carry on living my life the way that I am, I'll be more than happy because right now I've, I've, I have no pain. And this is the one thing that I say every day. I am finally, probably for the first time since I was like 19 years old, became a mom. I'm pain free and I'm living my best life. So that would probably be the best way to answer it is that it was never the plan. There was never yeah. a light bulb moment of, right, how am I going to lose weight? Because if I hadn't had that weight in the first time, there's no way I'd be in this position that I'm in now with my career. There's no way. I would have just disappeared into the crowd. But, you know, if you are a bigger person that's listening to this podcast and you have an idea, you have to just go for it. I yeah. remember walking into Alfreton Leisure Centre when I'd had, I think it was my second baby, and I so really wanted to work in the fitness industry because everyone was so positive. So I applied to work in the cafe because I knew I'd never be able to be a fitness instructor. Oh, damn. <laughs> but that's mindset, isn't it? And that's what yeah. I mean. Is that, you know, if you accidentally get trapped in that horrible mindset that your outside shell has anything to do with your mission in life, that's the problem, you yeah. know, and yeah. and that is the problem. It's like when I mean, I'm, oh, the Trisha show, I've forgotten all about that. That's so nostalgic right now. But, you know, them asking you those questions, that's because they didn't understand what you were about and what you were doing. I mean, you were one of the first pe pe people ever to, to do this. And um, I actually met you before Pride. I met you when I was 15. Yes. Remember this. Tell everybody yeah. about it. So I was a child carer and I didn't really go to school because I was looking after my mum and dad, but they invited me back. Um, so I left school essentially in year nine. And back then, I mean, you can't believe this all, ha this all happened, but uh, Derby College actually allowed me to go and do a multimedia course with, with 16 and 18 year olds because I'd been a carer for so long, I mentally just wasn't able to connect with the children at school. And I, yeah. and I left. I get, they gave me this emergency funding and I went to, to college to do multimedia. So I did radio broadcasting and uh, photography and all the stuff that I, I use every single day now, thank God. Yeah, thank God that they did that for me. Um, but I, I saw my, my radio kind of interaction started really early and I got invited back to the last day of school and the Black Thunders took me. <laughs> yeah, we arrived, <laughs> didn't we, with the Black Thunder van and took you up to yeah. school. That's right, yeah. And that was the uh, first time I'd even been on the school premises for about a year and a half. I was so living an adult life. From there, how did you get into fitness then from that beginning? That's literally like years later. So I only got into fitness in 2015. Yeah. So I was just having babies and babies and babies all the way after that, uh, after school. But so 2015, I got I got into fitness by accident. Again, it just this just wasn't the plan. I was building websites because um, I taught myself how to build websites. I've always had this sort of interest in technology. So I was building websites and going to businesses and I was I had to be honest with them because of my maths and English skills at the time yeah. saying I can yeah. do all of the artwork, but you'll have to provide the, the writing ready made so it can be copied and pasted. And honestly, again, I, I always try to shout out to anyone that might be listening. If you have dyslexia and you think that you can't do jobs like writing and things like that, again, just be honest and everybody, you'd be surprised nobody's bothered. They're not bothered at all because they, they check it themselves anyway. So yeah. don't, don't worry about that. Anyway, I um, met someone who needed a website. They didn't have much money, but they said, well, I can train you as a fitness instructor. I was like, random, but okay. <laughs> 
Okay. I love this. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. So so that's what happened. And then, like I say, I was working at the petrol station part-time as well because I only got website work as and when. Yeah. And that's yeah. when I thought, right, I've got this like piece of paper here and I'm going to give it a go and see if I can get 50 quid a week. <laughs> now, tell us now about the Prince's Trust. How did you get involved? You said earlier they came to you, did they, when they saw you? So the Prince's Trust helped me ginormously. It's all at the same time. So you know how I spoke about the websites and this fitness thing happening? So yeah. they actually came to me because I had written an email maybe two years before, never heard anything back, saying, asking a question, saying, um, I'm just wondering how I was allowed to not do my GCSEs and how I fell through the system. I had no social worker or, or anything with what was happening in, in my life. There should have been care there should have been social care so I, I wrote to the prince's trust and said like is there anything you can help me with because i want to learn how to read and write properly and i, I want to do something with myself and i'd called the business brand new marketing as in like brand Great. new with the new um yeah. marketing <laughs> i went down to see the prince's trust at derby with this little baby in a, in a carrier and to talk all about my amazing website business and i just sat for an hour and told him all about my fitness class <laughs> <laughs> because that's all I cared about. <laughs> they loved it, didn't they? This woman was amazing. I'll never forget her name's Jen. And she just looked at me. She she held my hand really gently and she went, I don't think you're a web designer. I think you're a fitness instructor. <laughs> and I was like, uh, yeah, I think it might be. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, and, and she even held my baby for me. And, and help me fill out the forms because I couldn't even read and write the forms completely to the extent that it needed to happen. Yeah. So they they just propelled me into this. Um, I, I, I did my English, my maths and English for adults. Um, I did the Prince's Trust um, Enterprise Program, which they still run now for anyone that, that wants to do that. And it teaches you everything about how to run a business, what's a brand, what's a customer, right from the very ground all the way up to meeting millionaires who will tell you, don't focus on work too much because you'll end up with no family. Like, they're so honest yeah. with you. Um, and it just happens so quickly because at the same time, this trolling that we spoke about earlier had already started. So the classes were getting busy. I was trying to get to my, my Prince's Trust meetings. I'd got the baby. It just... By the end of the year, I was um, I was filming uh, filming fitness videos, you know. So it was just such a whirlwind. And like you said earlier, with that, it's not like everyone met me and loved me. <laughs> I would say there was a clear 50-50 divide. People were not happy with what was happening here at all. Even the people who had originally inspired me to do this were just like... What is she doing? That's not yeah. the norm. No, no, not at all. They were like... that. You can't do this. And um, as more people came, unfortunately, them, which is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they. I moved forward. You know, I moved forward, and the warriors were my focus, and yeah. um, everyone wanted to see that happen. So that was fine. And then uh, I, I carried on with the Prince's Trust. They followed everything I did. Obviously, Radio Derby have been a ginormous part of my career. They've supported me from the get-go they've they've been there and uh especially sally pepper you know she's had me yeah. teaching yeah. when you get on with sally pepper it's great i love listening <laughs> to you too you have such a laugh honestly i do i love her she's become such a such a great friend but um the you know the princess trust were very excited about the media so when they never try to take over either if there's a chance of media they're they're pushing you towards it they're never don't forget to say the Prince's Trust. They would never yeah. say anything yeah. like that. So this happened. And then um, I was, it was 2018, about May. And um, I'd already, I'd filmed the NatWest business advert and things like that because through the Prince's Trust, they, NatWest wanted to come and film real businesses that had, had grown from the Trust. And I went to Birmingham to Primark and um, my phone was ringing. I mean, I still don't know to this day how I got signal in Primark because that's unheard of to begin with. It never happened. <laughs> no. And uh, I answered the phone and it was a royal assistant. Wow. And I really thought someone was winding me up. I really did. And um, they were basically saying that my company had been requested by His Royal Highness in Mayfair. 
And uh, I just didn't believe it. I, I just I must have said, are you joking? Are you joking? About three million times. Went to five guys to celebrate. And, you know, yeah. and I was just sat there thinking I wasn't allowed to tell anyone. I couldn't even tell my best friend because there was so many like, you know. Security levels and stuff. Yeah. 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 Even now there's so much that I get overexcited and just can't say some of it. But you, yeah. you get to go and... Um, you have to go to like an afternoon of, of how to receive the royal family and blah, blah, blah. So I was thinking, oh, this will be great. There's going to be loads of people there. I hope I get to speak to him. And uh, I didn't even know, because they don't tell you anything till the day, that the entire event was him meeting me and talking to me and me being paired with Coca-Cola in America. So, wow. No, it was just insane. Absolutely crazy. But he's such a wonderful person. And, you know, you see all this in the media and it just doesn't reflect anything that I've seen. Yeah. And, the, you know, the things that I've been lucky enough to see and be a part of as alumni, I haven't honestly ever seen any of this that, that they talk about, particularly racism and things like that. It couldn't be further from the truth, honestly. He's such a wonderful man. So respectful. And, yeah, and just so humble and normal. Like he's he's he just doesn't stop laughing. He's so funny. Um, but just at the end, you know, they were trying to usher him to it to his next thing, and he just stopped and he just grabbed my hand and he said, "I'm so proud of how you were with your mum and dad. You know how you took care of them and and what you're doing now for our communities." And I just remember thinking, as he said it, it was like my life flashed in front of me. Thinking, you know, that little girl that was caring for mum and dad and didn't go to school, didn't have friends, couldn't read or write. If someone had said to me, do you know what, one day the King of England will um, congratulate you on all your hard work, you just wouldn't believe it, would you? No, not at all. Now, in 2016, one of my friends was on the shortlist for Young Ambassador of the Year, um, wow. and both of us got invited to the 40th anniversary garden party with the mm -hmm. King. Were you there? No, I, the last event I was at, other than meeting him, was his birthday party. So I've never been to the garden, but it's his birthday party. <laughs> now, I reckon it might be the same, though. Was there those little Waitrose cakes with, like, the royal gold emblem on top of them? Sadly not. I'm so jealous. Oh, I need it's... one of them. Dom, this was like one of the best times of my whole life, like eating oh. royal cakes like this. Oh, of course. Well, that's what you should be doing. It's what you deserve, darling. <laughs> <laughs> but you know you are right what you said earlier you know the whole setup they you know there's even rules about not using their phones and there was idiots using their phones in there but nobody was stopping them you know they were just okay. so gentle and so like peaceful so you're yeah, exactly yeah. right you know all this stuff in the media is very hard to believe when you've had a personal experience with it it really is I mean even when um he had a show for his books. He's part of the Magic Circle. I don't know if you know, but oh, no. um, yeah. So we all went off to the Palladium in London, and of course, you know, we're just the kids on the Prince's tour, so we weren't expecting much. All of the expensive, big, posh people were put at the back, and the Prince's Trust were put at the front. We were on. The, I was on the front row, sat with Dynamo, <laughs> Penn and Teller, and all those sort of people, and I was just like. <laughs> what's happening this is amazing and it's all televised it was amazing but that's just the princess trust all over it's never yeah. it's yeah. never about the fellows it's always about the people yeah. so you know these people writing things they've got to sell a story haven't they but i wouldn't believe what you read and my friend was just a baker in marks and spencers so yeah. you know it just goes to show how they just catapult and really give confidence to normal people that's what it's all about that is what it's all about. I mean, one of the guys who was doing catering when I was there, he is now one of the main chefs at Buckingham Palace. Wow. Yeah, honestly, Amazing. it's just, it's all about the people. And I know it's hard to believe because honestly, the media can get us to believe whatever we want. That's why we all didn't leave the house for so long. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, um, look, you know, you've got to you've got to experience things yourself in all in all matters of life because this is how online bullying works. You know, you look at schools; it starts at school, doesn't it? It goes into into social, it goes into work, and everyone's a human being, and everyone has a story that other people are more than willing to tell false version of. So that's it. But that's yeah, anybody out there that can get involved with the Prince's Trust, I highly recommend it. It's just such a great organization. It really is, and it's not spoken about enough. You know, this. Up, I'm pretty sure might be a bit of out of date now, but up until the age of thirty, 
you funded straight away yeah. and they even give you funding to start your business as well so I didn't particularly use that because I didn't need it at the time because I didn't have anything to fund I was just running yeah. a fitness class. so um but yeah if you have got an idea please go for it because uh literally if I can change my life anyone can because I, I couldn't even read and write so and, and now I've got three published books and probably 50,000 members <laughs> so if, if I can do it anyone can I forgot that bit, didn't I? I forgot to call you author when I introduced you. Sorry. Sorry honestly, I forgive you. <laughs> now let's talk um, aqua aerobics. There's fitness yes. instructors, there's loads in the world. 99% of them hate aqua, but me and you share the love for aqua. I literally would stand on the side of that pool for the rest of my life if I could. I love it. I don't get in the pool, though, but you do, don't you, now and again? Yeah, I jump in at the, <laughs> to the end, just A, because I'm sweating to death, and yeah, B, so because hot. I actually like to do the exercise as well. Yeah. So what is it about aqua that we love, do you think? So for me, I'll tell you exactly what I love about aqua, is I kind of, so I teach at a hydro pool, so it's... <laughs> It's like teaching in the desert on the on the side of that pool. But you're eye level with them, which I think is good. Yes, it's great. Yeah, I can literally see them and, and they sing very loudly because the acoustics is great in there. Um, but for me, I'll tell you what it is. So we try to prioritise the spaces for people who are unable at, at present to do land activity. So some of them, you know, we've got spaces for some people to do both. But even they will say if there's somebody that has got a disability or has an injury or that sort of thing, they try to give the spaces up for, up, up for that person because it's very hard to get a space on obviously yeah for me it's like watching a magical mermaid show because they hobble in in so much pain and then they just become peter pan little children in that water because they can do whatever they want to do again and that is why i love it so much i, I love aqua i can't believe it took me so long to do it because really it's can't. almost like rehabilitation actually more than just yeah. exercise it's more than just exercise it really, really is. And, you know, one, one moment, like I say, you know, we, we've had people that have come in with water fear who are scared to get in a pool at all, who six weeks later, they're mobile, moving around, singing Mamma Mia at the top of the voice in a pool <laughs> with water up to their chin. <laughs> so it's just great. I just love it so much. And I love watching your echo as well, because you just, I just love you. You know, you're all about everything that I love and your, your fancy dresses and singing and dancing. And that's it. It is, I call it saving lives to music. Yeah. And this is why I recommend Aqua for overweight people, because you can get in that water. You're almost, it's like club size. You're like hidden, aren't you? No one can see yeah. you. You're in your exactly. kind of your safety zone. A hundred percent. I mean, I can remember coming to your Aqua class. Do you remember me coming over at the gym? Yeah. You came at David Lloyd, it. didn't you? I did. Yeah. I loved it. And I brought my friend and that was the first time she'd ever done Aqua. And uh, I was just like, oh, I love this. I love this so much. And we had a photo together. But yeah, I, I loved it. And at the time, I was still in a lot of pain, you know, that was that was during that time before oh, the history of me. And yeah, that's why I sort of started doing Aqua myself, because I, I just couldn't, couldn't go up to the studios and, and yeah. do anything like that. But um, yeah, I loved it. I love, I love Aqua. Now, as well as fitness, um, building websites, working in the um, petrol station, you also does do some more amazing things. You do makeup, you sell crystals, what else do you do? <laughs> um, something really important that I would like to talk about that I do is um, recently I've been able to start giving my time to a charity called Ascari, um, which is like a food bank, but better because you don't just get given the food. You have the independence to do your own shopping. So they've built a little pantry shop. Great. Um, so, you know, if, if anybody wants to get involved with that, then they can. Um, but then I do crystal healing. Uh, I make crystal bath salts, which... That's more about relaxation for me than than making money, really. I just sort of cover the costs on because they're quite expensive because I put really decent crystals in. Um, but they have like healing salts in the fact that it's like Himalayan salt and um, magnesium, lavender, send you to sleep, all that sort of stuff. And makeup, I love makeup. So do makeup. And I, I feel like sometimes makeup is like the final transition of someone that is trying to feel beautiful and I yeah. think that makeup is such an amazing medicine and I know that sounds ridiculous but if you think of anyone in history who has expressed themselves to the maximum 
there's makeup involved, even if you can't see it. And I just, uh, that's why I love it. <laughs> it's like, you know, putting on brand new clothes every day, isn't it? That's what it's it like. Is. The best yeah. brand new clothes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With the longest possible lashes. <laughs> Right. So tell us what is your favorite fitness class? I wanted to ask you that because uh, you do loads, don't you? Yeah, we do loads, but it's a very easy answer for me. It's Funky Step. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Funky Step is like step aerobics, but not like step aerobics. So I got pulled into a toilet, believe it or not. I've got to tell you this story and I, I'll try to be as quick as I can. So Lydia Campbell, who's a legend in the industry, uh, got hold of me by my arm, dragged me into a toilet and said, you have to, in, in Lydia's voice, you have to create a step for all people, Dominique. <laughs> I was like, ah, it was one of those moments. Because I couldn't step at all, really, to be honest with you. I used to go yeah. in step classes, it's just so fast. And I was like, anyway, I went home, bought a step, and I started to create these really basic, basic moves. And um, I designed a grid. So each grid's worth eight counts of music and it goes up to 32. So I did it like paint by numbers basically. So if uh, the move was made, I'd save it as an eight or 16 or a 32 and then it'd just drop into the grid. So I started doing that and realizing that I could stop at the end of line one and break down line two. So for the people, they were always capable of what was happening, never being left behind. So we would do line one, line two, line three, line four, and then we'd got this little cycle. So that was fun and Funky Step was growing. Well, it's, it's it grew. It, it was one of them things. It was full from the beginning and it's never, never not been, luckily. But I wanted to make it more fun. So we started to make it into themes. So every week, Funky Step is a different theme. Sometimes it's Strictly. Sometimes it's The Greatest Showman. Maybe uh, Moulin Rouge, that sort of thing. And the moves reflect that. They, you know, So they feel like they are the music. Um so with that, I love it because they all dress up and, and it's just so exciting every week to have something different, you know. Um, so, yeah, funky step. I love that. Whereas we've, we've got another class that I love spirit with the pom poms. And it's so funny watching yeah. people come in all hard and, and then they're like, hey, hey, you, you, I can be your girlfriend. <laughs> so I just love the dynamics of everything. But my favorite class is funky step. Yeah, without a doubt. Without now, a doubt. Again, talking about fitness, you know, getting out there and helping as many people as you can for the new year, you are doing an online offering, aren't you? What tell us about that? So having a look at how things happened with lockdown, you know, you know, the fact that we lost like 320 stone people became active, lots of lots of them are in running clubs and stuff that I could probably never do. Um, you know, they're so so fit now. I thought to myself, right, what was the bridge between me becoming a fitness instructor or doing any fitness in between having children? And it's two very obvious things. One's money and one's childcare. Then that is it. No yeah. childcare, no money. You, that's it. You've got no chance. So I decided to use all the footage that I've already created and also start to teach live again. And I've created a subscription that's three ninety nine a month. So I wanted it to be less than a Big Mac meal, the, the price. I wanted it to be right. less than a Big Mac meal. Not that I think that everyone can afford a McDonald's, because I understand in this climate, some people can't, cannot afford that. But I wanted it to be around that kind of, that area that it could be related to what's known as like an op economic option across the nation. So I've packaged it for three ninety nine. You've got access to 100 classes a month. Um, you can cancel whenever you want. And that includes like meditation, sleeper size, Latin fit, uh, anything really. You don't need any equipment because ultimately lots of people haven't got equipment. And more importantly, you can do most of it within the range of two hula hoops. So you can even do it by the side of your bed in a hotel room, all of that. Um, so that is what I'm going to be doing. It's called um, Pocket Gym Warrior. So Ooh. it's the gym you can carry around in your pocket. You can do it anywhere. And it's 24-7 access. So a lot of my focus is going to be on that and trying to work with farms and allotments with Farmily to try and help people literally get fit for less. Because it's all right coming up with these fantastic programs with their great big price tags. But that's just not who I'm trying to help. I'm really not. I'm I'm trying to get into homes. You know, I'm going to do some cooking with the food bank to look in the pantry, see what's there, how we can make that into a healthy meal. That's my focus. So don't yeah. worry. 
and my, and my dogs. <laughs> Can we see him? Is it him or her? Sorry. This is, is my, there's two matching ones. So oh, is there? Yes. Right, Marnie and Lilo. Oh, come on, girls. Oh, we love a bit of real life on the podcast. Look at that. So cute. They're my favourites. They're so, so good. They really are. Just... Right, Dom, what are your top three tips for the unfit, the overweight? How can they get started in fitness? Number one is immediately just try to move a little bit more because everyone thinks overthinks this. They start buying new trainers, new fitness stuff, signing up for gyms, and then sometimes that's where it ends. My idea for my first number one tip is just move a little bit more. Even around the house, your stairs will probably be your best friend. Even if you just do two up, two down, just start that today. That's tip one. Tip two will be, um, first of all, to accept yourself as you are and, and stop putting yourself into a box, calling yourself anything other than your name. Uh, or mom or daughter you know get to know who you are and love yourself first because weight loss if that is your main main focus it's not going to happen sorry to say but it won't you will go into a massive cycle of obsession and then you will self-sabotage and it will all go back to where it started so first of all you need to love yourself and learn to love the idea of being healthy stop focusing on weight loss and my third big tip is to learn to love to cook because with all the fitness in the world your food is so important and your body needs to be nourished properly so learn to cook don't ever hate food do not use food as a punishment to yourself ultimately if you're having a celebration go and enjoy that celebration but try to learn to love food instead of using it as a weapon and that's my tip because that's coming from from me having been that person and uh, surviving an unhealthy relationship with food. Now, if people want to get involved with you, come along to your classes in Alfreton or join in this amazing online offering, where can people get in touch with you and find out more? So um, if you type into Facebook, Warriors Fitness with Dominique Parlett, there's a big page there. There's also my page, Dominique Parlett Fitness uh, Motivation Coach especially if you like dogs there'll be loads of dog stuff um <laughs> or just look for me on facebook dominique parlor and honestly between myself and the team we will find you we won't miss your messages and we'll put you where you need to be so there's no fancy website or anything like that at the moment it's just through facebook um just just come and find us really and if you if you haven't got facebook google me <laughs> and i'm sure there'll be a way to to get in touch they'll usually put my phone number everywhere <laughs> you even do your own podcast as well don't you I do, yes. Yeah. So I've got the Finding Me podcast on Spotify. That's due to just start uh, being with its new sessions again, actually, for January. So I had a break in December. And there's a little book that you can have, a self-help book that comes with that if you want to. Um, but, yeah, you're more than welcome to come and join join the party. It's, uh, it's a fun, fit family of madness and love. <laughs> I don't want to let you go without asking you this important question at this time of year. All I want for Christmas is... For everyone that's listening or anyone that interacts with both of us to understand, if we can do it, anyone can. If you have a dream, you must follow it. You must. Because life is so, so short. And don't let yourself get to the end of your life and think, if, just do it. Great. Thank you so much, Dom. We'll see you again soon. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Please remember to like, give me a comment, share with your friends and of course subscribe to my channel. Thank you.